nor for yours neither. You've ungently, Brutus, stole from my bed. And yesternight at supper, you suddenly arose and walked about, musing and sighing with your arms across. And when I asked you what the matter was, you stared upon me with ungentle looks. I urged you further and you scratched your head and too impatiently stamped with your foot. Yet I insisted. Yet you answered not, but with an angry wafter of your hand gave sign for me to leave you. So I did. Fearing to strengthen that impatience which seemed too much enkindled, and with all hoping it was but an effect of humour, which sometime hath his hour with every man. They will not let you eat, nor talk, nor sleep. And could it work so much upon your shape as I have much prevailed on your condition, I should not know you, Brutus. Dear my lord, make me acquainted with your cause of grief. Is Brutus sick? And is it physical to walk unbraced and suck up the humours of the dank morning? What? Is Brutus sick? And will he steal out of his wholesome bed to dare the vile contagion of the night and tempt the roomy and unpurged air to add unto his sickness? No, my Brutus. You have some sick offence within your mind, which by the right and virtue of my place I ought to know of. And upon my knees I charm you by my once commended beauty, by all your vows of love and by that great vow which did incorporate and make us one, that you unfold to me yourself, your half, why you're heavy and what men tonight have had to resort to you. For here have been some six or seven which did hide their faces even from darkness.